Hello dear students. Today we will talk about imaging techniques used in oral and maxillofacial surgery. There are broadly two categories in which imaging techniques can be divided. The first one is invasive technique which is also called as interventional imaging. This technique is mostly used for diagnostic, therapeutic and curative purposes. The example of the invasive imaging procedure are embolization, delivery of cytotoxic drugs, calculus destruction, angiography and angioplasty. Next category is of the non-invasive technique. This includes plain conventional radiography, magnetic resonance imaging, radionuclide studies like scintigraphy, bone scan, ultrasonography, USG and computed tomography. The first one is plain conventional radiograph for example OPG and intraoral periapical radiograph. These are 2D imaging modalities having preliminary diagnostic value but unfortunately there are several disadvantages associated with them such as these two dimensional record of three dimensional object superimposition of various structures above and below in the pathway of x-ray in the region of interest it also requires multiple projections there is difficulty to detect subtle or small pathology or trauma it has limited value and poor understanding of the relationship of normal to abnormal structures. Traditional conventional radiography is being replaced by the newer modalities. So as I have already named the advanced techniques before, such as MRI, USG, in the upcoming part we shall discuss them one by one, taking up MRI first. Magnetic Resonance Imaging Most innovative, non-invasive technique, MRI is considered as cornerstone of medical imaging. It produces high-quality cross-sectional images of the body in any plane and shows superior soft tissue contrast. It is imaging choice for nasopharynx, tongue, and skull-based pathology. In the field of maxillofacial surgery, the best use of MRI is in the evaluation of the TMJ disc deformities. Next technique is radionuclide scan or scintigraphy. Safe amounts of radioactive elements such as 99 M technetium labeled phosphate or 67 gallium is injected intravenously. These radionuclide elements are seen to accumulate in the skeleton. Within an hour, 50% deposition is seen while the rest is dispersed in soft tissue. Uptake of the radionuclide is monitored with a gamma or SPACT, that is, single photon emission computed tomographic imaging camera or scintillation camera. In SPE, CT camera, detectors can rotate 360 degrees around the patient acquiring up to 128 images in different angulations. In this image, you can see bone scan of the skull showing malignant tissue in the bone not detected by other imaging modalities. And now, in this image, you can appreciate scintigraphy showing hot lesion in left TMJ area for the case of left TMJ ankylosis. Now we will discuss various indications of scintigraphy. Firstly, it is a dynamic method which is helpful for growth assessment of facial skeleton. And making comparison of uptake can be done in paired structures. Secondly, it is used to identify skeletal metastases in early stage. Thirdly, to find the presence of occult lesion. Fourthly, to locate the presence or extent of multiple osseous lesions. Fifth indication is in the cases to locate abnormal metabolism or growth in the skeleton or jaw bone. Last but not least, it is also indicated in cases where there is need to study the fate of bone grafts, its rejection, vascularity, viability, and uptake. Next we have advantages of scintigraphy, the first is that 99M technetium is easily available, secondly, it is inexpensive, non-invasive procedure, thirdly, low radiation, dosage is needed, then, fourthly, no adverse effects are seen, it is also a painless and safe procedure, short time is required and no special preparation is needed for conducting this procedure. Another non-invasive procedure is ultrasonography procedure. Ultrasonography is widely used to detect cervical lymph node metastasis. Second application is in examination of various masses in the neck including abscesses and diseases of salivary glands. It is also helpful in aiding in differentiation of solid and cystic masses. Ultrasonography is also valuable for guided aspiration and biopsy. In the end we will talk a little about CT scan. Computed tomographic scan is considered as gold standard today. Different techniques involved in CT scan are plain studies without contrast, simple versus high-resolution, contrast-enhanced studies, and reconstructions in coronal and sagittal plane.
So with this, we come to the end of today's discussion. Follow Surgical Utopia on Instagram account for chart of advantages and disadvantages of the various procedure. Also, subscribe to the channel for more videos. I will meet you in our next video. Goodbye and take care.